Hi, Lee Thurburn here, and today I'm talking to Ernest Barrow, and Ernest is a property and casualty insurance specialist, and you can see by the, uh, the graphic behind him that he's uh, talking to us from the beautiful countryside of the United Kingdom. Good afternoon, or good <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, or afternoon, yes. Uh, so, that, so yes, that is actually uh, uh, my sister's garden back in England. and It just kind of reminds me that there is still green grass somewhere in the world other yeah. than Texas. <laughs> it is beautiful. It is a beautiful location. So, um, well, Ernie, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get over here to the States? How long have you been here? What brought you over? I mean, tell us that story, please. Yeah. Well, I, actually, when I was uh, young, I was always, always had the aspirations and interest in music. So I was actually employed by the cruise ships and uh, was on the world cruises playing music. So when I actually got off the ship uh, in 1989, I believe, it's when I decided to quit uh, playing music on the ships was, was the time I arrived in the U.S. So, Well, that's good. So when did you, um, when did you get to the DFW area? Uh, it was about 1989. Okay, gotcha. Exactly the same year. Well, what brought you to DFW? Well, I um, had a, a good friend here that uh, we, we'd been dating for a while, and uh, she came over to England and uh, decided that after about a week of English weather in November, <laughs> that, that that was enough. So <laughs> she invited me to come out to the States. So I, I, I did and pursued that. I ended up uh, staying here, getting my citizenship, and... I've been here ever since. Well, uh, we're, we're certainly delighted you're here. So what is there, there's so many things you could do. Insurance is certainly a major part of the um, economy. It's a necessary thing. What brought you to, what attracted you to the insurance world? Well, I was actually in a uh, sales position as a regional manager. And uh, we had, uh, the company that I was with had lost a, a big contract and I, uh, I saw the future kind of looking dismal for the company and decided to make a change and insurance uh, was an opportunity that was presented to me and I, I took it and I actually thought it was a good choice. So how long ago did you, I mean, so how long have you been in insurance? Tell us about your business, what, um, you know, when you, you know, when you joined your company and who you're with and all that kind of stuff, you know. Sure. I've been in the insurance business uh, for, gosh, since 2003. So we uh, got a lot of experience in uh, property casualty. It's um, a line of the business that we've really focused at. So we, we actually write through uh, about 65 carriers. We do a lot of business with the A-rated carriers. I don't know if you're familiar with how the, the rankings are, but they do actually rate carriers by the, the, the financial strength. So obviously you, you want an A-rated carrier because of their financial strength should disasters happen. Right, right. So, um, what's your, what you, you know, tell, tell me what company you're with and, um, you know, how long have you been with this particular company? We, um, we actually started the agency Auto Home Plus and uh, it's been in operation, I believe, since 2009 now. The uh, independent agency um, works through a big group called SIAA, which is a uh, internationally group that uh, groups the uh, smaller agencies together so we all can have access to a larger amount of uh, companies and, and access and even be able to write in other states other than just you Texas. E, e, okay so um, the um, so you have an independent agent, which means you can run agency, and you are the agency owner. Um, do you have any agents that are actually working for you at this point? Oh, I think I've got a background. Uh, Alexa decided to uh, jump in here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Alexa. Nice to meet you. I would better be careful, otherwise I'll get her started on another uh, cycle. Yeah, don't don't say Alexa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So, um, hey, I was wondering what that was. So, um, okay, so insurance is one of those things where uh, if, you, if you're not in the business, it, some of the subtle distinctions uh, between companies, policies, agencies, and agents are difficult to truly appreciate uh, those differences. You know, for the uninitiated, I think, at least for me, it's a, a fairly, uh, you know, it's just hard for, it's hard to really understand what makes the difference between one agent or agency and another. How do you, how do you differentiate yourself in the market? I mean, it's a crowded market. So what are the things that you can do and that you do to make your, uh, make yourself uh, the, the go-to agency and agent of choice? Well, I think there, um, there's, there's different people out there, too, that look for different things. And what we target at are people who really want to have insurance to do the right job for them. Because if you want the best price and you, you're shopping at Walmart, you're not going to get the best coverage. Because if you go out just looking for price on insurance, you'll always get a low price. But you have to look at uh, the, the, the technical part of the policy and understand, well, what is covered, what's not covered, what do I want to be covered for? You know, I think people, when they go shopping, if they could understand what, they're, uh, what they need to be covered for first before they worry about what the price is going to be. Because, you know, a lot of people don't know if they've got uh, building ordinance coverage, slow leak coverage, how much water coverage on the slab? How much uh, coverage do I have for uh, marring and uh, roof coverage? Is it replacement cost and for how long? Does the, a lot of companies won't cover a roof for replacement cost for the whole entire life of your, your, your property because after 15 years, a lot of companies will start uh, depreciating it or we'll, we'll go to an ACV policy. So, you know, I think uh, as far as what we do as uh, an agency, we try and work with the customer and uh, look after them because sometimes customers need to, need the handheld to go through the complexity of it. Um, and obviously the willingness to do that. I think they have to put the trust in an agent. So I, I believe if uh, they can trust us, we can do, we can do a good job for them and we will. So well, I guess what you're saying is, is if you buy just on price, when you, when you get to the point where you have a claim, you may often find that um, either your deductible, um, your contributory part is much higher than you might have expected, and the amount of coverage may very well be less or even non-existent based upon some particular uh, caveats, clauses, or provisions. So, um, you know, just be careful of the low price policy because it may not cover uh, you like you expect it to when the when you know, when, a, when a claim occurs, right? I mean, sure. that's basically what it boils down to. Absolutely, and, and not only that, as I, there's a lot of companies that even have different policies based on their company. Even though, say, um, Company A has got a home policy, but they've got three versions of that policy. So. Yes, there's a cheaper version and there's a more expensive version. Is it an HOA, HO3, HOB? Those were the recognized standards by the Texas Department of Insurance's classifications for policies. So I think you have to understand what, you, what you're getting. Is it a replacement cost policy? Is it a name peril policy? Um, I know it's all state. That's one company that we can actually even write through too through our, our group. But um, some of the some of their policies have got uh, lacking coverage on slow leak and the name peril policies. So it's not as uh, a comprehensive policy as you can get in the market. So, so um, would I be? Um I mean, so what is it? What is it you would like to? I mean, if you had a, if you had something you wanted to um, sort of advise people to check into, what would be one of the most common uh, misconceptions, misunderstandings, or uh, when a claim occurs, the sort of the surprise, oh my gosh, or aha moment that they realize? What are the 
what are the big catches or gotchas that you you kind of run into the most most frequently? I think uh, name peril policies uh, come up. The replacement cost on a roof, because sometimes they might have wording in a policy saying it's a scheduled scheduled roof. Well, that doesn't mean that it's a replacement cost roof. So that's that's what I see. And obviously, slow leak endorsement. A lot of companies don't offer that coverage. So what is a slow leak? When I think of a leak, I think of a water heater bursting, and that's not a slow leak. What's a slow leak? Well, yeah, water heater would be more of a sudden an accidental leak and a slow leak would be a drip from maybe even a shower pan that just continues over time. But most common, I would say, is probably an AC unit where it gets blocked and the water starts dripping out. And sometimes a lot of uh, people have their home uh, I mean, the water heaters in the home located in, in a place like the attic or a place where the runoff could then cause a lot of damage, especially if it's on the second story. Okay. Okay. I get it. All right. So, um, so what kind of, um, you know, what, what, so when you're, when you're seeking people, um, what is the, I'm going to actually go a different direction here. When, as a business owner, what are the things that, um, that make you concerned about the future of the insurance industry? I mean, you're in an industry that, uh, you know, I mean, we have COVID, we have riots, we have um, all kinds of things going on that are unique <laughs> this year. Yeah. Uh, some of them may not affect you at all in terms of, um, uh, you know, impacting your business. But when you look at the future of the insurance industry, what are the things that uh, cause you to, you know, what do you think about? What are the concerns that you have? Well, I think there's a lot of changes happening with artificial intelligence and the fact that can they replace the insurance agent or, you know, uh, another aspect, I guess, is the self-driving cars. How will, how will this impact the insurance industry? Um, it might actually be a good good impact because the rates might actually go down. So maybe that will be good because um, you know I'm I'm a driver too. So although personally I don't think ever I don't want anyone driving my car for me. I want to drive it. So and I think no matter what I think the law would be a percentage of people who will want that. I think the artificial intelligence will. I don't think it'll take over as an agent. I think it will really, it will end up being an assistant to, to help agencies. So I think the artificial intelligence might be a, a, an actual plus. So um, as cars get smarter, the last car that we bought, um, we don't typically buy brand new cars, but the last car that we bought was a 2015 model Hyundai. And it has the, 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 Thing where you turn your blinker on and it checks to see the lane and it gives you an alert so you don't mistakenly move into a lane. You know, cars are getting smarter. Uh, yep. It's by no means a, a able to drive itself. But uh, as we move closer and closer and closer to that point when a car can actually drive itself, um, all of the intelligence in a vehicle gets, um, gets better. And that, that has to be a factor in reducing uh, rates. I mean, more modern cars that are more intelligent, don't they have, I um, mean, they have a higher price and they have a higher repair value, which increases the price, but they also, because of their intelligence, they lower the, the risk of an accident. Is that a kind of a true accurate thing on, on how cars are factored in? Absolutely. Yes. They, um, the, the new intelligence does give you a discount now because a lot of the cars do have that uh, warning devices uh, that alerts you when someone gets too close while you're driving. So the insurance companies recognize that and they feel that that, uh, that uh, device on the car is helpful and has also helped reduce uh, costs of insurance claims. So yes, it's definitely helpful. But the, the flip side of that is a lot of those devices are located in things like bumpers and 
rear and, and um, mirrors that uh, can get hit or broken. And so therefore, what used to be considered a minor little bumper collision can cost thousands of dollars because you have to replace all those sensors, right? So I mean, it works Absolutely. in both directions. Yeah, the, uh, I guess the cost of cars and the technology in them is increasing all the time. And also a lot of things that uh, change the, the cost of repairs too. So we have to uh, be aware that if you have an accident and you're, you like, we've, we've seen more, more issues, I think, with Tesla, because I saw that uh, on one case where someone had a Tesla car and they had some damages done, but they had to wait uh, for quite a few months to get the parts because they were unavailable just in the general market. Yeah, so um, I guess, um, you know, that's the trade-off. So I've, I've got a question for you. When somebody wants to, when you first engage with somebody, what does the process look like? Do you start off by reviewing uh, their current policies to see where they're at? I mean, uh, what's a, what would you like to, you know, tell somebody that's looking for uh, personal lines coverage, whether it's their home or their auto home? Uh, why should they? Why why should they call you? Well, you know, when we um, meet with the client, we we like to reassess their risk ourselves. I mean, it's good to see the declarations page from the current carrier to see what they actually had, but that to me is is just to prove that they've they've got insurance, and that's about the only thing I I look at it for. Um, yes, we can look at the coverages to see where they're at and what they actually did have, but we will basically start from scratch and we will start to get the information we need to quote it and also evaluate the risk and see what coverages they need. Okay. Right. So how does somebody reach you? What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Well, you can uh, give me a call directly if you like. Uh, our office number is 972-818-3344. Or you can go to our webpage of autohomeplus.com and shoot us an email from there. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to put all that information um, associated with the, uh, the video when we post it out. So, um, Ernie, thank you for making time today to, to chat. Um, I um, appreciate uh, you know everything that you do, and and uh, look forward to um, you know, just watching your business grow. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you. Thanks, Lee. Take care.